Hello there, Andrew. How are you, sir? Well, I feel like I aged two years over the last week, but other than that, I'm I'm doing great. Um, how about yourself? You and me both, sir. You and me both. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it's been a quite quite an eventful um, five days. Mm-hmm. That is a, an understatement. Uh, yes, I would say so. Um, so obviously, we're talking about uh, what what happened here with um, those that have CrowdStrike deployed, uh, CrowdStrike Falcon agent deployed out in their um, organizations. I saw numbers on Monday, I think, that looked like Microsoft was saying it was about eight and a half million affected devices. Does that sound about right to you? That sounds about right, and and based on my own experience, a good chunk of those are also servers. So, uh, yep. uh, including servers up in Amazon, up in Azure, in people's data centers. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting few days here. You know the the one thing that I um, that I've been talking about the last couple of days and kind of keeping on my mind is um, while this was um, another understatement coming out of my mouth here, an unfortunate um, incident that we had to deal with, um, what was not surprising to me that I like to spotlight is the community rallying around uh, ways to fix things, Um, colleagues, friends reaching out to each other, um, checking in on each other, even outside of IT, making sure the IT folks were okay. Um, nothing but support and positivity and understanding is what I've experienced the last uh, five days, uh, which has been phenomenal. I can totally agree with that. It's It's been amazing to see how the community has basically come together, sharing their findings, sharing their solutions, coming up with brilliant workarounds for for a tricky scenario absolutely hopefully one that uh, we will not have to deal with again for a very very long time yeah (laughs) i just feel bad for you know everyone impacted by it and of course all the friends and colleagues that had to work through nights and weekends and whatnot and Everyone gets impacted on the other side too. It's it's been a been a challenging few days for sure. Absolutely. Well, what do you say? Uh, we still, even with all of that said, there's still a few um, bits of news and uh, exciting things I've come across over the the past week. Do you think we should hop into them? Um, yes, sir. I think all right. let's um, let's do this. I have your screen up right here. That looks like my screen. So the first thing I wanted to share, uh, I came across this, and I thought this was just a fantastic resource. Uh, Meryl Fernando, who is just constantly putting out great content around, uh, mostly surrounding Entra Entra ID, um, put together a few mind maps uh, that help visualize the services that are encompassed by Entra, uh, the larger Entra uh, umbrella, as well as... um, uh, sort of the resources. So this first mind map here shows um, <clears throat> uh, mostly the services, I believe, that sit under the Entra umbrella. The second one here shows a lot of the resources. So for example, uh, well, I can't let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit better there. Um, you know, under Entra ID, we're all dealing with users and we're working with groups and we're working with devices. Uh, and this is a nice way to visualize how those um, break down into the individual uh, properties and things you can assign to each of these resources. And the third one here, oops, there we go, um, breaks down the uh, admin roles that are in Entra. Um, So we have a column with the cross-service roles here. So things like global administrator. When you are assigned global administrator, you're going to have access to things like Entra, but you're also going to have access to Exchange, to Intune, uh, to some of the um, security or defender portions of 
or rather the portions of Defender, uh, if you have global admin, for example. But this is a way to take and get your organization away from global administrator with uh, the breakdown of very specific roles, either within Entra ID here in the second column or service specific roles like we have here. Um, and you can see how this breaks down to the various services, Teams, uh, for example, or Intune or Exchange. Um, so coming across this, I just thought this was a very nice uh, visualization that sort of helped makes a bit more sense of what is um, a quite large suite of, of services that are interacting uh, together. All right, uh, excellent. So that was the first thing I had. Uh, the second one I saw just this afternoon, uh, hot off the presses. I haven't even had the chance to fully dive into this yet. Um, Microsoft actually put uh, together some of their own um, recommendations on how delivery optimization uh, should be configured. So this is the um, <clears throat> document that was put out uh, on Microsoft's Learn site. Uh, so it talks a little bit about how to set up delivery optimization, the prereqs to allow delivery optimization communication, um, and steps through step-by-step uh, step how you can configure these things. We see the requirements, which ports are required, how endpoints should communicate with each other, a network topology. Um, and I'm not sure, for, at least for me, a lot of this uh, documentation is new. Have you come across much of this uh in your travels, Johan? No, I, this one I have not seen. Uh, okay. I've seen a lot about Theo, but this one, this one is new to me. Um, let's see if I can. Uh, if you have a link there, you can share, and I can bring it up real quick. Absolutely, I do. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can make some sense out of this one. <laughs> Oh, I figured uh, if I had a conversation with anybody about delivery optimization, I'd be happy to have it with you. I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. So let's see. Well, I recognize one of the contributors, Carmen. She is on the development team, so uh, she knows what she's talking about. That for sure. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Well, I like it. Does look like it talks uh, about um, a lot of the default values that are configured, um, and where you might find some efficiencies in changing some of these values. Um, yeah, that that is an absolute must. Uh, Unfortunately, the default values in Windows, they're not, they not great. Um, yeah, and I know you've put together some blog posts in the past on recommendations there. Yeah, I've done it for group policies. I've done it for Intune. And I'm looking through their settings that they recommend. Well, a few, few are still missing. Um, the stuff that they added in is, is not, uh, it's not entirely out of line at all. So that is good. But for example, the QS value, I still like to set. We see in that improving efficiency, doing a bit of round robin of the, the values as well. Okay. Uh, they recommended setting it to between a meg and a half a meg. We have seen it more effective when they go a little bit lower, depending on your network speed. No, but a heck, I'm 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 impressed. This is not bad. Good. And nice to see some official recommendations at least, right? Yeah. Um, do you want me to? Um... Drop the two blog posts that you have on the Two Pint blog as well um, in our links yeah. for this evening. Why not? Why not, sir? All right. I could do that. And it didn't even take any convincing. 
Nah. <laughs> Awesome. So I well, um, I was happy to see this. I thought it would be a, a good idea for us to to sort of look through this. And um, great, this is a this is a great foundation then um, to get started. Yeah, the only thing that, that it was a little bit hard to read it because it was sectionized. That it was like uh, eight nine different sections with like one or two recommendation in each section. Yeah, uh, I eventually found the QS one. Uh, that I was thought was missing first. So, all right. No, this hats off. Excellent. Kudos. Yeah. All right. Um, so a couple of other things I have here uh, real quick. One, uh, this first one is from uh, Ugar Cook, who has also been very active in, in recent months, putting out some great content. Um, and he's got a, a, a script here, I believe, um, that will help you take some of the uh, extension attributes that you may have on your devices in Intune and actually uh, get them over to the Entra objects as well for your devices. Um, so a, a nice, um, uh, well-described blog post put together here, of course, talks a little bit about what details are available and then how we can actually get those device details over to the extension attributes um, on the intro side of things. And once you have that there, um, I, I find that to be a little bit more, a uh, little bit easier to do reporting, a little bit easier to put some groups together, dynamic groups uh, that otherwise may have been a challenge um, uh, coming from some of the environments I'm familiar with. Uh, naming, for example, um, uh, just additional ways to group your devices, right? Uh, this is another resource to be able to do that. So. Um, Fantastic stuff here. Um, and then back to some of the uh, topical things at hand, another um, blog post uh, that Uger put out there, uh, I'm sorry, a script. Uh, I don't know if there was an associated blog post for this, um, but a script that you can use for a uh, remediation in Intune to go through and uh, rotate your BitLocker recovery keys. So should your organization have been uh, affected um, over the last couple of days by uh, the CrowdStrike issue, um, it's likely that you did have to use some of your recovery keys. Um, but anytime your BitLocker recovery keys are used, they should be rotated. Now, there are certain scenarios that that happens automatically, or at least it's supposed to happen automatically. Um, but something like this will ensure that it is done um, both in a timely fashion or on an ad hoc basis. Um, so I wanted to throw this out there as well. Um, and last but not least, still on the topic, a nice tweet that I came across from Martin Himken, a good reminder that if you realized over the last several days that you do not have a working WinRE environment on a device, uh, Martin has a script here uh, to add that back to your computer. Um, now, I think as we've talked about WinRE over the last several months, Johan, you may have shared this script in the past, but um, this seemed like a pretty good time to remind folks that this is a resource out there. Uh, should you have come across this issue uh, over the last several days? All right. Awesome. That's all I've got for today. All right. I have a few things I figured I could share. See if my copy and paste magically can decide to cooperate. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go here. So first of all, I did stumble across that uh, the WP Ninja conference in uh, the CERN this fall, mid-September, uh, sold out. Congratulations to everyone organizing that one. I'm looking forward to go there myself. I have a few registrations, or registrations. I have a few sessions to present at the conference. So it'll be nice. Also a good opportunity to go see the family over in the, in the Nordics. It's uh, always a bit easier when you're on that side of the pond already. It's basically a 
around the corner trip uh, yep. pretty much everywhere in Europe once you are in Europe. It's, it's more trippy getting over the pond. So looking forward to that one. And once again, congrats to the WP in India organization. I know how much time you guys spend making this event happen. Um, then I did stumble across this morning that CrowdStrike actually did release a uh, preliminary uh, incident review, quite detailed, uh, uh, about the, the incident. Uh, we have also seen a lot of uh, research posted online from, from this, of course, for the last five, six days here. But it was a good read, uh, quite well written, quite open. Uh, to no one's surprise, acknowledging their mistakes, but, you know, still. Still a good read, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, then on the more positive side, perhaps um, tomorrow, I am joining the Petri Get IT conference. Uh, two sessions there regarding app deployment and patching using Intune. And when I say patching, it is for applications. So upgrading and, and uh, superseding applications. So. If you have a chance to join tomorrow morning, and we'll go on until about lunch, um, by all means, do so. The, the price is just right. They do this for the community, so it's, it's a free way, uh, mini conference to attend. So highly recommend that one. Make sure to put that in the link. So that was, um, oh, I had one thing here. I stumbled across a post from, let's see who that was. Well, this one here, it must have been Peter, perhaps. No, Nicholas Tinner. Nicholas Tinner. <laughs> uh, he shared his, uh, his stream setup, his lab setup. Uh, uh-huh. Cloud Edition. So that was a good read and uh, sharing a little bit of, of, of what it works. And in the end, there's a long list uh, of tools available or recommendations or tips and tricks about tools to, to, to borrow so, or use. That was a good one. I'll be reading that tonight. I always like reading those posts from community members. 